I'd like to also like to add that we have uh, Robert uh, Vashon here this evening. You, you all remember Bob. He gave us a, um, a really wonderful audit report uh, presentation. And we asked him to come here this evening to talk briefly about forensic audits so that you'll understand that for a conversation that's going to take place later on the agenda. So um, before he begins, uh, the finance director has asked for the opportunity to make a very quick statement about her concern for this particular issue. And then following that, Mr. Vashon will give his presentation. And then we'll wait patiently for the council to take this matter up later on the agenda. Mayor and City Councilors, I would like to address the Council as well as the public tonight. Um, first, the segregation of duties is the assignment of various steps in a process to different people. Segregation of duties is a basic building block of sustainable risk management and internal controls in the finance field. In our case, no less than three people are involved in all aspects of the payment process. The City's segregation of duties involves the department head or their designee, the accounts payable clerk, the city treasurer, or in her absence, the city manager, and finally, the finance director. Our finance staff are empowered and encouraged to question transactions, and we do. Secondly, the city has an audit every year, and in most years has a second, more rigorous federal single audit. In the last 18 years that I've worked in this position for the city of Claremont, we've had three different audit firms auditing the city's books. The city has had clean audits, which means there are no findings by the auditors to the governing body. Most every year of the past 18 years, and I know we have had clean audits with no findings in the past 12 years, and there has never been any suggestion of fraud or criminal intent. Lastly, forensic audits relate directly to an issue such as employee fraud or embezzlement or vendor fraud. The request for a forensic audit implies some type of criminal activity. The implication is not just disparaging to me as the finance director, but all of the finance staff. As I stated earlier, the department directors, the accounts payable clerk, the treasurer, or the city manager are all part of the approval process for payments. Councillor Stone, in his position of authority, has publicly implied by wanting to address a forensic audit of the city books that there is a suspected criminal act by myself or the finance staff. There is no way of walking back this implication and the detriment to the reputation of those involved. While I'm sorry that the cost may be prohibitive and the taxpayers may have to bear this burden, the only way to restore reputations as well as the public trust is to have a forensic audit. I'm requesting that the council have this done. Thank you. Madam Mayor. Yes. I, I, I'm flabbergasted that we are now discussing item F, even though we haven't gotten there yet. Well, I don't think we're discussing anything. This well, falls under the city manager's report. On a, and this is what he uh, selected to do under his report. So if the council has, a, has difficulty with that, I mean, now is the time to talk about it. But you are addressing a um, agenda item. So if we're, if we're going to go there, we might as well just go to that agenda item and deal with it. Can I can I make a request that since since this is being allowed, that we move F up to discuss it? Because I I have some personal feelings about this, and I I don't want to sit here stewing about it until we receive or get to that point. And some some folks in the room might not even be here for that discussion. So if we're going to discuss this and have this presentation, I, I request that we go right to F. Well, I'll make a motion that we move uh, F up to now. Yeah. Okay. So we'll call for. We're going to have the motion was made by Councillor Koloski and seconded by Councillor Pope. Be, I, made, need to I be, made the motion. Yeah. Councillor Hearn, seconded by Councillor Pope. Yes. Is that correct? So, um, as we're waiting for the roll call, just a reminder, we're doing this under city manager's report. <coughs> well, Your Honor, I think what the council is suggesting is that this now be moved into the 
regular agenda item, so it's no longer the city manager's report. Okay, if so this passes, this the motion passes, so which was certainly something I would be very agreeable to. So, did you have anything beyond this topic on your city manager's report? Uh, no. Okay. All right. Roll call, please. Councilor Sard. No. Councilor Hearn. Yes. Councilor Stone. Yes. Sister Mayor Dameron. Yes. Councilor Keniston. Yes. Councilor Koloski. Yes. Councilor Pope. Yes. Mayor Lovett. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Good evening and thank you for having me here. I've put together a, a slide presentation for the city so that you would know uh, what a forensic audit covers and what a financial audit covers because there are some differences. What's a financial audit? Financial audit is an independent objective evaluation of the city's financial reports and financial reporting processes. That's done every year here. What does the auditor do? The auditor, part of his audit planning re requires risk assessment, so he looks at the city operations and say, where is the highest risk? And, and in fact, if there's high risk, where do you spend time? That's analytic review, that's part of our expectation analysis, broad inquiries of both management and the council, and evaluation testing of internal controls. So we know what the internal control system is, we've documented that, and then we test compliance with that. And the last thing is statistical compliance testing of those controls for federal and grant programs when necessary, when you have a single audit. So now what's a forensic audit? A forensic audit is an examination and evaluation <coughs> of the city's financial records to derive evidence that can be used in a court of law or legal pr proceeding. Bob? Yes. I think you went the wrong way on your clicker. Oh, sorry. Thank you. There you go. Yeah. <coughs> The primary difference between a financial audit and a forensic lies in the purpose of the audit. Going back to the first paragraph, you're looking for something specific to derive evidence. Forensic audits usually relate directly to an, an issue such as employee fraud, embezzlement, or vendor fraud. So what am I saying there? What I'm saying is, if you want a forensic audit, you need to define what you, what you want the auditor to do. Because to look at every transaction in this city, and I'll go over that shortly, will be extremely expensive. The issues with the forensic audit, as I said, define the scope for the examination by the city manager or city council, whoever, whoever authorizes it. What do you want us to do? Forensic audits are usually very specific, such as all payments to one or more vendors or one or more employees, whether it be payroll or other pay pay payments. The cost of a forensic audit has a direct relationship to the scope of the examination and the volume of records being examined. For example, in Claremont, you register 15, over 15,000 motor vehicle cars a year. You issue property tax commitments quarterly, and there are some payments who are made all at one time, and some payments are made piecemeal during the year. You write over 2,000 payroll checks and over 3,700 vendor disbursement checks just from the city. Now you can imagine if you w w want to request someone to look at every transaction. For example, 
in a revenue, motor vehicles, for example. We'd have to go to the permit. We have to see, see when it was re uh, recorded in the books. We have to see when it's deposited in the bank and check the bank statement that it's there. For a disbursement, same thing. Except we do have a uh, supporting documentation of, of an invoice from a vendor or, you know, if it's an expense item, an expense item. Uh, can we get back there? If it's an expense item, it gets, uh, I, I've been in this business over 48 years. I testified many, many, many years ago in one, in one town that wanted to, to do this and said you didn't have enough money. That was when I was with the Department of Revenue. I've never seen it done that you, anyone's looked at all transactions because the cost benefit may not be there. Um, and it would be very expensive. We're not talking 20,000, we're talking probably between 100 and 200,000 at a minimum. But if you can define the scope, what you want to do is smaller than every transaction, it can be done. What do we do is, the, 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 the city of Manchester has an internal auditor who reports directly to, to their city council equivalent or board of aldermen. This approach would be more cost effective, but it still would be expensive because you have payroll. But that's what the city manager has done. So they have an ongoing audit of various departments um, through, uh, throughout the year, and, and those departments are selected by the the Board of Aldermen, not the Mayor. In the past, an auditor, not us, charged the government over $100,000 and found only verifiable fraud disbursement of $100. And that comes from the Attorney General's office, that information. What have we found here in past audits? We, we have reported no significant deficiencies in the city finances. The prior audit also found no significant deficiencies. Regardless of the amount of the embezzlement, we as a firm would report it directly to the city council. So if we found a problem, we would call the mayor directly and ask what, you, what, what the council would want to do. In the past, we've noted no deficiencies in internal control or compliance deficiencies. So the prior two audit firms also reported no deficiencies. Now I'll open the floor to questions. Thank you, Mr. Bashan. Is there any questions from the council? Councilor Pope? So, we'll get into this a little bit. Is it, <clears throat> we'll go to a bank for a moment. I understand that there's a very strong audit. Um, I think the term forensic audit has been used when you have bank presidents or bank finance officers change hands just to make sure that everything is set. Um, I don't, I don't do I don't do banks, but I, I I would think that would be done by their internal their most a lot of banks have internal auditors too, uh, or they are outside outside auditors. I mean, when I first heard of this, I was thinking that and thinking this would be a way to um, assure things rather than look for fraud as much as to assure that we are clean and ready for the next. But manager. that if that that w will also be handled in the audit, which I believe is scheduled for. September or October, we would do the same thing. What's well, the highest risk? Someone who's left the office, right, of a position of authority, and, you, and so we're going to look at 
uh, you know, what he's been paid or she, and what expenses they've been reimbursed. We do the same thing regularly for the director of finance. We, we, we verify her salary. We make sure that was what was paid. Any, any uh, out-of-pocket reimbursements, we look at and make sure they're right because she controls a lot of the transaction. Other questions, Councilor? Yes. Uh, okay, Assistant Mayor Dim. Yeah, just briefly, in conducting an audit, I think to have assurances going uh, from one person to another, a change in administrations, we actually have your clean audit from last year as well as uh, from the previous year. Correct. And in your conduct of an audit, I believe, at least the ones I've been associated with, there are a number of account reconciliations that take place that are prepared by staff, that are checked by your independent auditors, that would be verified by banks, vendors, and so forth. So there's a pretty thorough chain in terms of transactions going in and out. Am I overstating that? No, you're absolutely correct. And, and one of the tools we use in a highly volatile cash area mm -hmm. is we, we send the bank to the bank directly from us. Uh, confirmation of balances. Mm -hmm. There's a new system out there that does it electronically at a fee, of course, but, uh, but we, we, we're not going to rely that the financial, the re reconciliation at the end of the year, right, is appropriate. We have found instances many years ago when the treasurer in a small town kind of uh, changed the letterhead, which you can do. <laughs> And, 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 and put a, a uh, different bank statement in. It reconciled. Mm -hmm. I mean, people can do that. So we, you know, that's why we always confirm the banks. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Councilor Rivera. Thank you. So in your um, slideshow, it says in the past forensic audits, the auditor not has charged the government over $100,000 and found only a verifiable fraud is this uh, department of $100. Which uh, community are we talking? Where did you get that? talking about, about the town of Newmarket. And the $100 was known beforehand. And what was discovered by the outside auditor is that uh, both of them had, had a spa treatment paid for by the town. It ended up, that's all, that's all they took. Uh, I don't, um, who asked you to come here tonight? Uh, Mayor again, the city manager. Okay, and are we being billed for this? No. <clears throat> and did they ask you? Um, I mean, it's part of your. It wasn't in the slideshow, but did they ask you to get any type of quotes as to from? other places as to how much they would charge for a forensic audit? Uh, no, because we haven't defined what you're looking for, right? And I think that's real important. If you want someone to look at all transactions, you can't afford it. I literally cannot afford it. Let me give you an example. There was a problem with the capital reserve fund Im impact fees for the town of Londonderry. They paid their auditor, not us, $450,000 to reconstruct it. It's not inexpensive a service if you want it. If you define it, you want to look at someone's transactions or department transactions. That can be done, and, and the cost obviously comes down quite considerably. But if you want all transactions, that's very expensive. Councillor Koloski? <coughs> I guess I don't have a ton of questions because I don't really know what Councillor Stone was looking at or what he specifically was looking at. And I understand trying to be ahead of things and I understand how, um, why you would be requested to be here this evening, but it, it, it's also irritating me that we didn't get to the item uh, in a matter of a minute. I could have made a decision based on the words out of Councillor Stone's mouth if I 
felt it warranted any attention whatsoever. So I just want to remind everybody that one person doesn't speak for nine. So I don't know what he's actually looking for. I'm, I'm very familiar with forensic audits. Um, I've been involved in several nonprofit organizations who, when they change bookkeepers, people throw out that term. And I know from those cases that those organizations couldn't afford a forensic audit. They settle with a reconciliation of the books. Um, so I don't know, like, but I, I have a hard time even putting my head around spending money, even though Ms. Walters requests we do so, or narrowing anything down without knowing specifics. And I have a very hard time handing out food free out of my restaurant and explaining to senior citizens that how we spend their money and that we may be pissing it away in this. So without having an answer, I, I don't have a ton of questions for him. Okay, so one comment to your comments, Councillor Kowalski, is <clears throat> I believe the request was made during uh, our last regular meeting under future agenda items and directives. Mm -hmm. I would encourage all council members, if this is something that you don't want to pursue on a future agenda item, that's the time to speak because it's preferable to put agenda items on the agenda that have the support of the majority of the council. In this case, I think the term forensic audit, well, I don't want to speak for you, Councillor Stone, but I can speak for myself in that when it was stated a forensic audit not being in the finance world is, is not my business. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that a foren the term forensic audit implies already wrongdoing and is used to support a legal proceeding. So I think the value of this presentation at least will put that to bed, what a forensic audit is as opposed to what an audit is. Um, but based on this, presentation, unless we're very specific in what we're looking for, there is no way that the cost is going to justify the action. Councilor O'Hearn. I may not, I may be speaking out of line, but I was like, it was set for a discussion, and again, I don't know exactly what Councilor Stone was going for, but it was set for a discussion, whether or not it was, he may have used the word forensic audit, it may have could have turned out to be something else. We don't know because we never got to that discussion. I just think we went, for some reason, we went to an extreme to get all this information before we even got to the discussion to see if, if that was the road we were taking. Oh, sorry, Mr. McLean. So, first off, with great respect and deference to every member of the city council, I understand that sometimes things are said with the best intention perhaps always they've said with the best intention but to talk about a forensic audit at the very end of a meeting is that is important so to think now that because the city staff have done a little work to try to help identify what a forensic audit is and how it applies um, is certainly I don't believe is out of line in any way shape or form because this is a very serious discussion and as soon as that word forensic came into the conversation we were off to the races and now what we have is an issue whether it was intended or not that has to be addressed in some fashion I don't think we can simply say well I think we're just going to let it pass tonight. I also agree that Councilor Stone should have the opportunity to explain himself relative to what he meant by this, and perhaps that will help shape the direction that we go in relative to what we need to do next uh, to verify to the public that their trust in us is well placed. And I think that's really what we're talking about now. Have we suggested that there's a problem with trust for the staff? And can we demonstrate to the public that we are very satisfied with the process that we have in place? Councilor Kowalski? Just, just to, with all due respect, just to touch upon your point of when the, the item was added at the end and, and we all weigh in, out of, out of respect for every council member, 
I don't have a problem when somebody wants to put an item on the agenda. I think that's the time where it it should be on there. Um, that's that's the time since we're not able to discuss it right then and there. Uh, when else would we? So, as much as my inkling might have been to shoot down someone's idea or request, we don't have the opportunity to discuss that, to decide collectively and take a vote if we're going to actually put it on the agenda. Um, I yeah. understand what you're saying. I'm just saying if people have real strong feelings one way or the other about putting it on the agenda, that would be the time to verbalize that. And, and, and I don't know until I hear him speak. Councillor Pope. <coughs> yeah, I guess uh, <coughs> I'd like a little clarification. I haven't heard Councillor Stone speak to it yet. And I certainly appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All due respect. Thank you. <coughs> what I recommended the forensic audit was based on the high level of uh, professionalism that's done in addition to being the actual high bar for the evidence factor of a forensic audit. Now, if there's an audit in between a forensic audit and what we currently do, I'd be very uh, entertained by that. There, there is another level of a service. It's called Agreed Upon uh, Services Agreement, AUP. Uh, but again, what the city has to tell us, what do you want us to look at? And what compliance procedures are you most interested in? And we will take all those transactions, whatever you select, and make sure they, they, they come with that. And would come with a report. If, for example, if you said you wanted us to look at um, all disbursements over $50,000, I don't know if that's where you're going, but, and we found one that wasn't approved, we would know one that's not approved. And you would know that. Follow up. Mm -hmm. Under the current auditing procedures that you currently do for the city of Claremont, uh, how many samples do you actually draw from per department, or is it done as a whole? Uh, but every re every revenue or expense cycle, uh, we select 40 transactions statistically. That is ra at random, so we could pick something at 75 cents, and and, and larger. Um, that's a statistical sample uh, under you know, our. our audit sampling procedures okay do you actually work for the uh, school board at all excuse me not school board but for the SAU here no we don't okay the biggest concern is that we've had a lot of surprises come out of the uh, school board and mm -hmm. the SAU lately which are pretty disheartening when you're looking at our legislators going down asking for more money the mayor going down asking for more money and then we have these huge snowballs that hit us when we end up having huge expenditures that should have been caught earlier. That was I've my biggest that. concern I've for the that. forensic audit, because I thought it'd be a high bar to set. Yeah. We'd be looking at more <clears> transactions <throat> to make sure we don't have the same circumstance that happens like the school did. I think the school district auditor should have found some of those things. Since half, some of them are a quarter of a million or more, I would right. think that that Absolutely. would probably stand out. Mm -hmm. I, I fully agree with you. Councilor Kulowski? So having sat through two different auditing firms, and as soon as this was, this was requested to go on the agenda at the last meeting, I, I thought about this, and we've had, I could, I could follow the logic if it was the same firm year after year after year, but two firms have identified nothing red flagged uh, of wrongdoing. So without specifics of you know what somebody thinks is incorrect I'm not comfortable proceeding spending money to do any of this uh, mr. McLean so I just want to understand what happened with the school board very quickly so uh, I don't believe that it was an audit issue I believe it was a failure to uh, apply in an appropriate time frame for grants and other revenue sources so it was well known once those grants and those revenues weren't coming into the school so it wouldn't have required an audit necessarily to find that am, am i correct about that or was there some other fraudulent activity taking place according to the newspaper is all i saw uh, i think the auditor in his, in his report not in order that because they they missed some revenues it's pretty clear and by the way you're not alone in the Conway district, the, uh, in the school side, um, he inflated free and reduced meals. Uh, 
so that he, he didn't want have to uh, lay off any employees. So if I could, Your Honor. Yes. So my question to you, uh, Bob, would be what could we do here now to help restore, should the council decide to go forward at this point, what would you recommend that would help restore this question for us and help satisfy uh, the concern that this would be the right time to do something a little bit different? What could we do at this point? Again, on a complete out of the finance department is cost prohibitive, but anything that the finance director touches or the former city manager, we could look at. If you want to think to, again, in, a, in essence, a agreed upon procedures engagement, and you want us to select many more transactions, we can do that too. Did you, were you going to say something, Sister Mary, or were you? Yeah, um, and I'm trying to think of how to phrase my, um, my response. There are a number of open questions. I think in terms of the school, certainly I think the auditor should have found that uh, all those occurrences, those were six-figure <coughs> six problems that occurred the same problem over a couple of years. And so just simply doing revenue comparisons from year to year, prior years, I would think you'd notice that. Um, we, we analyzed many, many years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I know that's pretty standard. In terms of your statistical uh, samples, what kind of reliance uh, does your sample size give you in terms of the whole population? Uh, it, it gives us that, the controls are fairly stated because remember, we are testing when we do that. We have the controls, we know the controls are, mm -hmm. and we are testing those controls in our test. Yeah. Right? And Randomly. And you're throughout the year, it's not one week, mm -hmm. it's throughout the year, and, and, the, and the numbers are <coughs> in the vendor checks, for example, are, uh, the checks come from a random ge number generator and that's how we figure out what, which ones mm -hmm. we look at. If we find one error, we have to either increase it to 60 or or say that, some, that, we, that, we, that we, there's no reliability there. So your sample size gives you a pretty high degree of reliability. In 95 percent. Pardon me? 95 percent. 95 percent. Tables. Okay. Um, maybe unlike others on the council, uh, when Councillor Stone made that uh, request at the last meeting, I did know what that term meant, but the term was already out there in public. Uh, it, it, it was gone. Uh, I feel badly that I didn't respond to that immediately, but the, the horse was already out of the barn. Um, so I can say I apologize to our finance director and the finance staff. That never should have been. Uh, the term forensic, uh, we all watch whodunit shows, and we all see everybody waiting for the forensic evidence to come in to point us to the murderer. Uh, so that term has a meaning that people in the street, I think, are pretty well familiar with. Um, so I do apologize for that, Mary. Anybody? Next. Councillor Kenston? So I've debated even bringing this up because it's kind of one of those things where if I talk about it, I don't want people to think I have any, any sort of ax to grind, which I don't. This happened several years ago. But when my husband was injured in 2014, he's with the fire department, he was hurt in a fire, and he was out of work for about 10 weeks, and he was on workers' compensation. The workers' compensation process was not done, I don't want to say correctly, but it wasn't following the, the protocols that it was supposed to follow. And um, basically what happened was when you're out, Primex takes 26 weeks of your regular and your overtime, they average it, and then you get a check. And the employee should keep that check and then basically just pay the city for union dues and medical insurance. But what happened was we had to sign over the Primex check to the city and in the end ended up paying about $300 more than was awarded my husband. And I, a year later, had to request that $300 back 
we were also being um, charged taxes on the income because it was being paid out of payroll when it shouldn't have been. We were um, contributing to retirement when we shouldn't have been. So it's not that I don't think anyone was doing it intentionally to be fraudulent, but I think that mistakes were being made. And so my thought on when he brought up the audit was, oh, well, maybe there's other things that we can look at to just make sure that we're in absolute compliance and that no more mistakes like that are being made. But I don't think I want to spend $100,000 on an audit either. But. So the request was made by Councillor Stone. And you're saying it was because of concern with regard to the school district. Yeah, well, it wasn't to specifically attack or uh, insinuate anything on any particular department or individual for the city. It was a, a time for us to have a new city manager coming in. I wanted to take a look at our books, make sure we didn't have any surprises that the school had. One of the issues with the school one also is you had the penalty from the IRS, which I, w yep. I would feel that a good accountant we would, would have picked up We would up write on. that up. Here's yep. my philosophy on any kind of wrongdoing or in a government. One dollar is too much. I will report one dollar to the council because my personal character and ethics is at stake. And I know, because I'm a taxpayer someplace, that that's important. It isn't that, oh, it's only $10,000, don't worry about it. That's not the way our firm works. A little bit of follow up on my end also is that when the, what I believe is a $300,000 penalty from the IRS. And it was what for 2016 or 2017? Well, I think. Both years. Wow. Uh, yeah. Well, wait, let, let, let me. That. Yes, first you, and then I'll say something okay. before we go too far down this. What road. happens in those kinds of audits is the Internal Revenue Service comes in and does their audit, looking at everything, including who got a 1099, who should have got a 1099, who should be on W two because. He was uh, the uh, teacher and was doing a school sport um, out, out of class, and he got, he got a stipend. That's, that's his salary. And they do assess penalties when that happens. But, so it's something that happened at a point in time. I think if it's, they got, keep getting penalties on a regular basis, if, that, if they were significant, the audit should have found it. So I want to say one thing before we go too far down the road, and then Councillor Kolaski. I am very uncomfortable going too far down the road with regard to school board business without mm -hmm. them being at the table because we don't have all of the information. And without all of the information, we may inadvertently imply things that are not true or are not accurate. So may I suggest, since we have a quarterly meeting scheduled, um, hopefully for September, because our July meeting was postponed, that this be an item for that agenda. And it is a community-wide issue. It impacts the community. It falls within that definition of the things that we want to talk about. But any concerns with regard to the school board and the school district, I think we need to be talking about with them present. I mean, and you, we would want the, the reverse to be true if they had a city council issue. So. I think the more we learn about it, that will help us understand perhaps what went wrong, what, what was missed. When we're talking about IRS penalties, the last information I had was that was the defined penalty, but there was action that would be taken to suggest whether that would be paid out or not or forgiven. It's usually reduced, you correct. Right, right. So those are my concerns with regard to what the assistant mayor said um, I, I think we have to be very careful as a governing authority in the things that we say and how that may impact people's character whether it's by mistake or not only the individuals who ask the question can determine that. But I think the city manager's concern, and I think we've heard it from the finance director, is their credibility. He's concerned for his employee, and the, the concern was the credibility. Now he's asking the question, how do we move forward and reestablish the 
city administration's credibility with the public. So um, that's where we're at. Councillor Kowalski? Well, <coughs> first of all, it was, it was a comment made by one councillor. So I, I don't feel this governing body needs to, to address how we're going to move forward. If that councillor has explained himself and if he wants to say the words, I'm sorry, and move on, that's fantastic. But the last time I looked, my, it doesn't say school board next to my name, and I don't want to sit here discussing school board business. And any concern that we have, I don't agree that it needs to, we need to kick the forensic audit conversation over to the school board level and, and sit there as a governing body, joint with their governing body to discuss it. I don't think that's appropriate. I, I have the right as a citizen to go show up at a school board meeting, stand at the podium during my three or five minutes and ask them that question. So I don't think that this needs to move forward. And if, if anyone has that concern, I would invite you to go to the meeting and stand there and speak. That's an option. So it's up to the council. Assistant Mayor Dameron? Yeah, so we can get kind of get off from dead center. Yeah. Uh, I'm not quite sure what to do regarding Mrs. Walter at this point and, and her concern, but... And her request. And her request. Yeah. From the council's point of view, I would make a motion that we not appropriate any money nor move ahead with anything resembling a forensic audit, and that's a bad term. Okay, can you repeat that? <clears throat> not appropriate any money? Any money to move ahead with or contract for what is termed to be a forensic audit as per previous discussion. Is there a second? I'll second it. I don't know what the council's uh, past practice is with regard to this, but that's a negative motion. So you're saying we're not going to appropriate money that you haven't appropriated. So do you need a motion that's a negative motion is the only question I'm asking of the council at this point. Hmm. Councillor O'Hearn. Sorry, who was the second? Councillor Lassard. Thank you. I don't know why we have to have a motion if it was set for discussion. If we've come to the thought that we don't want to continue with the discussion, we move along. I don't think we need to always make a motion to say we're not going to do something because at the end of the day, you know, we can bring it up if you want it at a later date, but if you make a motion now, down the road, you can't bring it back up because you have to file a reconsideration motion to entertain that. So I think we just not have a motion and just move on to the next item on the agenda. Councilor Stone? Procedurally, I would concur with uh, Councilor O'Hearn. I don't think we're at, we were at a point of doing a forensic audit. I thought we were having a discussion. And I could be mistaken, but I thought that it was the purpose of what I recommended be put on the agenda was a discussion, not an actual forensic audit being ordered. Um, Assistant Mayor Dameron? Yeah, I, I do understand uh, the city manager's concern, although I do feel we probably could have taken a motion to take it out of fund balance, I guess, if we'd wanted to. Uh, however, I, I would state at least uh, the feelings of one counselor uh, that I'm perfectly uh, at ease, comfortable, you pick the word, uh, with the yearly audit that's done for the City of Claremont books and for the way they're kept uh, by our finance department. Uh, and I will not vote for anything um, going beyond that. Councilor Polk, you had your hand. <clears throat> I did. I just had a question about how much our normal audit costs on a yearly basis. It's around thirty-two thousand. <clears> the prior auditors were over forty thousand. Okay. Okay. So we have a yes, Mr. McLean. Uh, if I could have a question to uh, Bob. Yes. So Bob, if you were to do anything, if the council were to consider anything at this point in time, would you, I think I heard you say specifically that you would look at transactions that involve the finance director. Is that correct? We, we could do that. 
So, and I don't suspect there are very many of those transactions. Would that be uh, something that the city council might consider? And what would the cost be for something like that? Cost is I have no idea because I don't know how many transactions we're talking about here. Uh, but, you know, it would be based on an hourly rate because that's what we, we do when we do these kinds of, what you guess, uh, of audits. But I don't know that that's what the council is looking for because he's referring to wider of another entity, wider issues that, that have been found. And I'm not recommending this. I just want the council to have this information. And you may very well want to just move on from this point and not have any further conversation. Or then again, you may want to consider uh, some limited approach to this. Uh, at, and so I, I just want to make sure you have that information. Okay, Councillor Kowalski. <coughs> we do have a motion on the floor in a second. Well, I, I would be voting no because I don't believe that there needs to be a motion. Um, I would just say that you know later on we're we're uh, voting to overspend the welfare budget in a hurting community, and I, I I'm not going on this witch hunt spending a dime. <coughs> okay, so can we have um, the oh, Councilor? <coughs> having a motion to table this discussion to a future. Okay. So the motion to table was made by Councillor Hearn, seconded by Councillor Pope. That requires a roll call, I believe. Okay, motion to table. Councillor Assard? No. Councillor Hearn? Yes. Councillor Stone? Yes. Sister Mayor Dameron? No. Councillor Keniston? Yes. Councillor Kowalski? No. Councillor Pope? Yes. Mayor Lovett? No. You tied. <laughs> so just pass. Yeah. 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 So that leaves us back to our original motion. And I'll be happy to withdraw the motion if that makes um, certain people happy or, or whatever. Uh, it isn't my intent to have a negative motion or anything of the like. I, I want this discussion this evening on this topic done and a vote of confidence put in our city finance office. I don't care how it's done. Uh, somebody procedurally tell me how to do it and I'll be happy to do it. Councilor Kowalski. I haven't heard anyone say t this evening in the contrary of a non-vote of confidence. I, I think even Councillor, I may not agree with him, but I think he even explained what his intent was. So I don't think an official vote of this body is needed. And if something comes forward in the future that somebody has a specific and you want to discuss it, I would highly suggest maybe a non-public under uh, being able to not tarnish somebody's reputation. Okay, so <coughs> Assistant Mayor Dameron, you said you would like to withdraw. Yeah, I'll withdraw the motion. Are you willing to withdraw your second, Councilor Lassard? Not really, but I will. Okay, so that's done, right? So given the conversation, I will check with the school board chair and superintendent, superintendent to see if they want to do anything with this discussion because we brought the school board into it. And maybe they want to handle it at the next quarterly meeting. Maybe they don't. Maybe they want to, you know, have people go to the school board and ask their questions. It's up to them. Okay. Well, I, I don't think I heard um, a request by the council to do that. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm just saying that because we had the discussion we did tonight, the school board chair or superintendent may be asking to have that on the agenda. That's all. And out of consideration to them, I would allow them because we had a conversation about the school board and school board district issues and they weren't even at the table. Counselor. Wow. Counselor O'Hearn. I would just express my that I don't think we need to go to the school board and have a mutual talk about this. I think we 
Well, let's let them decide. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying as a counselor, I express my I don't think we need to. I just, I just think we're start, I think we're starting to cross boundaries between the two governmental entities. That that's why I'm giving them the consideration. They can do what they want with it. I don't want to get. Free. That's all I'm trying to do. Councillor Koloski. I just want to make sure that the message is that is being delivered to the school board is that this council is not requesting that that item is not is on there. I understand your your intent, but for anyone watching at home, I don't believe in furthering this issue. If I would like to discuss it, I will go stand there at their podium. I I don't want the mixed message that this council is requesting to have that as an item or any anything being mistook I understand that and if you would like I can put the council as a CC on my email I'm just trying to be courteous to the school board Assistant Mayor Dameron yes one last thing and this would be uh, with indulgence to the finance director just simply since uh, the comment was made how would you prefer we handle this this evening so that this issue is properly put to bed with a stake through its heart. I'm not sure how you would handle that. Um, it's been out there for the public, so. What action would you like us to take? I think I stated that in my I statement. Okay. Okay, Councilor Rohern. I'm just going to make, I don't know if it's a point of privilege or what I did. This is the, it is the council that we are dealing with and to ask the administration how they want us to proceed uh, gives the interpretation that apparently we are run by the, the administration this is the council we were voted elected here and it should be us to decide what direction we are going to go and we don't need to have the administration hold our hand to direct us would you like to speak to that <coughs> Yeah, no, it was that the intent, but since unfortunately the phrase was put out into the public uh, that has a meaning and it, it has a very negative meaning, uh, it's only courteous to ask the person involved what they would prefer that we do. I don't think that's having anyone take our hand and guide us to a proper solution at all. Councillor Stone? Like I said before, there was no specific individual, so I think that becomes a moot point at this time. I think we should move on from this question. It's the will of the council. There's no further entertainment of it. I don't know why we're still being a dead horse. And we are the governing body, and we don't need to have anyone hold our hands. So if this is the end of the discussion for this particular matter, we should just move on to the next agenda item. Councillor Kalaski. As you know, it pains me to say this, but I agree. <laughs> You've been saying that a lot lately. <laughs> Can I, can I just ask one thing? Sure. So um, can, can we skip over the next item and go right to Citizens Forum since we're well past the time that it's noted? Um, we only have one appointment to make and then we're, we're where you're at. 